sell it, buy it, rent it, lease it. AMC Property Services, making your real estate dream a reality. Welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining us. This is episode 12 of Real Estatical Speaking and more. I'm your host, Karen Cook, and on this show, we seek to invite other professionals that are relevant to the real estate industry to educate you on, on various aspects of the business. Now, this week's topic is tips from the quantity surveyor. And I'll go right into the quote. And this week's quote is, don't think of cost, think of value. I'm going to invite those of you who ha may have questions kindly to place your questions in the chat and we will see how best we can answer during this broadcast or we can answer them as soon as possible thereafter. Now I'll go right into the introduction of our guest speaker and our guest speaker is none other than Mr. Fitzroy Donaldson. Mr. Donaldson is the owner of FGW Donaldson Construction Project Management and Quantity Surveyors Company. Yes, good evening all and welcome to I must say congrats Ms. Curran for having launched a, such a program. It's well needed in my opinion because uh, most people actually are not aware of the various professions within the industry. And I can tell you from experience, it seems as if most people know nothing about a quantity surveyor. The moment they hear the word surveyor, they think, oh, that might not look through that thing. No, the man that looks through the thing is a land surveyor. So, you know, countless times you have to explain exactly what a quantity surveyor is or the functions of a quantity surveyor. Okay, I graduated from CAST, which is currently UTEC from back in 1980. That makes it, what, 42 years in the business. Um, attended CAST actually on a government scholarship and um, did the program quantity surveying. Back then it was a three years, very intensive program. Today it is, I think, a four year program. Um, it's very extensive. Um, of course, having the experience that I have you know, gone through 40 odd years in the business and the diversification of the industry today you know, it's best you can't sit around and say, hey, I'm a QS now, at least not me. I have gotten involved in all aspects of construction. Plus, I've added um, quantities, well, uh, project management to my portfolio. All right. Thank you for that background. So we'll go right into the Q&A segment. Sir Donaldson, what are the requirements to become a quantity surveyor? Well, it, okay, it starts with, of course, going to high school, getting your, oh gosh, what do you call it? Um, well, back then I'm familiar with the GC. <laughs> <laughs> so these days, these days it's a CSEC and of course, you know, your, the, the, um, the CAPE. <laughs> okay, so mm -hmm. well, okay, that's where it starts and then you go into let me say locally then for Jamaican, Jamaica's um, purposes. You go into UTEC and you register for the um, quantity surveying program. Also, there is the Institute of Quantity Surveyors, the Jamaican Institute of Quantity Surveyors. Upon graduation, you will register and become a, a probationer. And um, there's a requirement you go through that until you become a let me say fully qualified, fully registered after doing, you know, various tests, exams, etc. What does the job of the quantity surveyor okay. entails? All right. Um, 
in essence, the job of the quantity surveyor. We are, I, I refer to us as the, the accountants of the industry. We work with numbers, we work with estimates. The core essence is um, element is doing what's called a bills of quantities for a project. For example, let's say you want to build a house. You get your architect to draw your plan, do your designs, and of course, um, your next step is really engaging a quantity surveyor. When there's a Bible quote, you know, those of us who are, those of you who are in the Bible, you know, which man sets out to build a house without first counting the cost? So you start there and um, you develop your budget from that, get your drawings and you measure off in details all your concrete, steel, earthworks, everything. I, I might say from a pin to an anchor, from start to finish, and um, that develops your budget. That is presented to your financial institution, um, you know, National Housing Trust, the banks, etc. And um, of course, they, you know, disperse a loan against that. Along with that, let's say, for example, you're doing a development. Let's say, like a housing scheme, multifamily development. You so you're a developer, you want to do that for profit, you engage the services of a quantity surveyor to develop what's called a developer's budget. You do your bills of quantities and you plug in the various elements, your interest rates, your professional fees, your land cost, and you know all elements, um, your legal fees in terms of selling back, stamp duty, taxes, everything that can be, that will be relevant to the costing, your approvals, you have to submit your drawings to the various uh, municipalities for approval and all those costs, every cost counts. And from that you develop your developer's budget. So you come down to say a cost per unit for building and selling this particular um, development or this particular unit. You add your markup, whatever that markup that that uh, developer might choose and you come up with a cost. So you don't go into a pub, into a project just you know foolhardily. You go into it with informed knowledge to ensure that you attain your desired results. When is it necessary to get a quantity surveyor's report? I know you may have answered some of that already, but <laughs> well, pretty much um of course you you yourself the client would want to know hey, okay, I have this house to build. You want to know exactly what that house is going to cost you. And as well, majority of people would need to go to the bank to get, or any financial institution to get that um, loan to build, of course, to build your, your, do your project. So, of course, once you are engaging in building, it is highly recommended that you actually engage the services of a quantity surveyor and early on in the game very early on you do that it's unfortunate that um i've come to the stage now where there are so many clients who engage a quantity surveyor after they have gotten into trouble what do i mean by that they come with us with they come with their um another story they come with their tales hey you know, I started this construction and um, you know, the contractor said, well, he could build this for, you know, $5 million. I've expended $6 million and I'm nowhere near completion. What do I do? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, my answer is what should you have done? <laughs> the, the quantity surveyor would, of course, um, do his builds of quantities, develop his um, budget and also negotiate the contract on your behalf with your contractor of choice and develop a contract. So there's extensive legal work behind the services of a quantity surveyor as well. You have various type forms of contracts that you use. The, um, our local um, construction industry has what's called a CIC or GIC um, form of contract, which is a you know, basic contract which spells out the terms, conditions, under which this contract is to be executed and um, without that you are begging for trouble. Wow. Without that you are begging for trouble.
again, too many times I, I get involved or people want to engage, you know, point to survey as services after they have gotten into trouble. And unfortunately, it's a little too late then. Wow. Because the, the legal industry in Jamaica, nobody wants to get entangled in that. You can be entangled in that for years upon years upon years. Man. So avoid that, you engage the services of a quantity surveyor up front. Okay. What other purpose does that report, the quantity surveyor's report, serve? Well, other than getting your financing in place, of course, it gives you that feel for the value of your property. In essence, it gives you that feel. And in general terms, you're going to build a house, you need to know what that cost is. Now, there's another aspect that the quantity surveyor does not necessarily engage in, and that's the, say, evaluation. What do I mean by that? You bought your land, you build your house, you might have spent $10 million in building your house. Now, in doing that, you would have built up equity within your within that portfolio. So what the valuation, what the valuator does now, who again is not a quantity survey, but he is a valuator. What he does is he takes all that information, your construction cost, your land cost, and he looks at the whole demographics of the the area, the industry, and he, he develops what's called a, it's a evaluation report of what your actual project is. So that's another aspect of it. Okay. So that's, I guess, would be used for an incomplete structure. Um, well, or, or is it a generally speaking? Generally speaking okay generally speaking and, oh let me give an example i was called by a prospective client today he it's an issue of family land so i guess years ago daddy gave a cousin permission hey you can build something on the property now i don't know if they did not spell out in general terms or in details to the relative hey don't put a permanent structure put I guess something a temporary structure something that can be removed but anyway years later daddy passed on and now siblings coming up and yes daddy did, did, did give you permission but what they did they, they negotiated a, a deal in that because now we supposed to come up with uh, the materials that he used in building the, the structure so now I'm going to have to go back through, do physical measurements because there are no plans and come up with the amount of materials that would have been used in that structure. And the agreement is that the family will now reimburse the relative for the material cost only. So in that case, would that be, would that be um, the cost you would have expended at that time or at present value? No. It is at present value because, of course, we know you know, mat well, construction costs change daily. You're right. Today, I went to buy a ton of steel. I bought one ton a month ago, and it's up by thirty thousand dollars per ton. Wow. So, yes, mm -hmm. the replacement would be at today's materials cost. Okay. All right, whenever a quantity surveyor is off target with the cost computed to complete a building or renovation project, what recourse does the client have, especially if prices are stable? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, in instances, some client will only engage you if you have professional indemnity insurance. What does that mean? Okay, I you have engaged my services and I say your building is gonna cost ten million dollars. And um, I'll say okay, you can add ten or fifteen percent as contingencies to say it might go over by that amount. But lo and behold, your project ends up at fifteen million dollars. 
is the quantity surveyor liable? Yes, he is because you engage, you, you hire him, and him or her, and you depended upon that person's um, professional competence, if I might say. You, 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 you're, you, you know, you're leaning on their professional capability or capacity to, to, to guide you. Indeed. So, what happens now when you have your professional indemnity insurance? That insurance, if that person sues you and it ends up in court or whether by negotiations or whatever, it of course it's a paid by the insurance to, to compensate the, the the client. Okay. Well, yes. Wow, well, so does that really happen in Jamaica? Please do not put me on the spot, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being honest okay there, there are some famous instances where for example um was it sandals white house and that one comes to mind because it starts off at or started off at a couple hundred million us and before you know it by the time the project is done the cost is doubled wow we see it in the government sector daily project starts off at x dollars and before you know it the price is doubled and to be frank with you miss karen i have not heard of anybody being sued or anybody being <laughs> professionally liable but i'm saying this on this forum so at least people will know hey if it's worth it to you i need to see your insurance okay yes ma'am and in the converse where like no where prices are very erratic and you did your projection or your estimate say about six months ago and hence your report would have somewhat been obsolete how do you reach a compromise in that regard okay that's an excellent question so you negotiate a contract um a year ago and usually, you know, usually some, especially in the government um, sector, mm -hmm. you have tenders going out or bids going out. Now, a year later, the contract is about to start. You go through all your contract, you know, checks and balances and ensure that they, yes, it was tendered a year ago, but, you know, you, you usually get a written, written permission from the um, a written agreement from the contractor that you're still willing to stick by your tender submitted a year ago however what is essential there now and this is where good advice from your quantity surveyor comes in even to a contractor bidding a project you are to ensure that you include in that bid process what we call the basic price list of materials what does that mean it means last year this bid that i submitted i was getting cement at a thousand dollars per bag mm -hmm. i was getting lumber at 150 dollars per footboard measure i was getting steel at a hundred thousand dollars per ton yes and ensure that you put every single item in that document okay. i'm getting um asphaltic concrete to pave my road at fifteen thousand dollars per ton i'm getting marl at three thousand dollars per cubic yard every single item should be included in that um, basic price list of materials so okay that happened a year ago you have your basic price list now i'm ready to start what it means is that under the contract i'm entitled to the price difference so a year ago, I was, I, I'm saying my bid price included steel at $100,000 per ton. Today, it is $130,000. So, of course, there's a net difference of $30,000. So, you claim that against the amount of steel that you purchase and you get your escalation on that. Now, it's on claim. You said you, Did you say you claim? Yes. In, in doing claim um, Okay. The client okay because what happened you know, the client has their his or her quantity survey that's monitoring on their behalf mm -hmm. and the contractor has his or her quantity survey as well mm -hmm. so the contractor in um doing his work 
and presenting a claim for payment to the contractor, you would have made reference to the material escalation, which means you'd have to submit your original invoices against, um, and that would establish what your increase is against what your bid price was. So, it's a very excellent um, question, and again, uh -huh. Not many contractors, not all contractors, you'll be surprised. Not all contractors are aware of that and insist on doing it the proper way. And that of okay. course can lead to bankruptcy, especially in today's um Yes. Economy. economy yes. Mm -hmm. And um what if um is it is it a requirement? for the quantity surveyor to actually do a site visit prior to, or does he go by the plan and that is enough? Is that? Um, I would say it's highly recommended that you do a site visit. A picture tells a thousand words. Mm -hmm. You can get your drawings and you can get your topographical um, survey done and it can show you your different elevation and your different levels. Mm -hmm. you, you might even get a soil soil test report. Yes. To say that um, you know, two feet down it's solid rock or ten feet on it's solid rock, depending on the nature of the construction. Mm -hmm. It is always advisable to do a site visit. You just might see something there that's not on the drawing. And exactly. It can make a whole lot of difference. Major. So, major. In that case, where the under, where where the builder underestimate the cost because the QS didn't go and do a site visit, and the, the client is of the opinion they give the client a certain price to do the the, the, um, the renovation or the construction, and then when when um push come to shove or, or in a renovation for example the the um say for instance the the, the, the floor um you know they, they they did not take into consideration that the floor would have to be dug up and then to see what what's happening there so it was just like a as you said a picture looking at a picture and not doing a site visit who's whose um liability is that because a client client is not a, was not aware you know you got a particular figure that you're working with you would have probably applied for your loan from your financial institution and uh, you know at the end of the day you are left holding the bag um suppose the client is unable to to come up with the shortfall to complete this project whose liability is that that's a good question i don't think i can sit here and pinpoint exactly who there are so many circumstances to look at did the architect pick up all the necessary information all the relevant data that was supposed to be picked up did the engineer pick up the relevant data as well these are questions and of course did the quantity survey based on the information provided was he or she informed enough based on the drawings as to what was there so again it is essential do a site visit also remember don't forget about that professional indemnity insurance the indemnity insurance yes in the event that you're undervalued that might have to be um to kick in and bear in mind architects engineers all professionals within the industry mm -hmm. should carry that um insurance but as okay. it happens in jamaica now you know people tend to get away with a lot of things yeah well um i guess this is an eye opener to those of us who will want to undertake projects that we should always ask that question just to safeguard ourselves and um you know it is really really key that we know 
so in the event that um you said you 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 um you you definitely would not um know who who would be responsible or or be liable because you would have to take into consideration but if the the um the actual the all right let me let me give you the scenario so if the if the quantity surveyor did not do his side visit as you recommend but he comes but but there is a a gap a real huge gap and it's not a case wherein um the prices are necessarily um the prices are stable i should say so prices are still prices are not erratic like no where the prices are erratic and um you know you're given a particular cost to work with you would have submitted that to your financial institution they provided a process it and they provide they disperse the funds to you in the tranches and when it comes to the final tranche you still find out that you are not <laughs> near completion um you know so it still boils down to you're saying it still boils down to who has the um the insurance to to, to um to do that compensation well yes and you know i i must say in you know in instances like you know budgeting and controlling your budget Mm -hmm. uh, you know, great weight is on the quantity surveyor's back, mm -hmm. shoulders. Great mm -hmm. weight. Mm -hmm. Plus, of course, you have to monitor your payments on a regular mm -hmm. contract. You have to ensure that you don't overpay the contractor. Mm -hmm. And not to veer it from what I'm saying here, but in too many instances we have heard of overseas um, clients. Mm -hmm. You make a, a, that's a, a terrible point. sore point i am sure you in your line of business terrible are, sore point across them every day what's happening in that instance is that um, people overseas they send their money to a contractor who is recommended by some friend or some cousin or somebody who knows somebody no references nothing uh -huh. Doesn't, even if the person have an office nothing uh -huh. about this person and next thing you know the person would have received seven eight million dollars like one client i have now she was overseas she paid to date seven million dollars and i'll be frank with you when she hired me and i went there i did not know where to start when she started showing me what the contractor did i just i was at a loss wow the only question to her so in paying this money who advised you did uh -huh. you see a picture uh -huh. I mean, in these days, I guess, you know, of um, social media, uh -huh. you know, live videos and so on. Uh -huh. Right. You know, you, you use, use something to, to help to cushion that. Exactly. I, I have a previous video that I did. And that was something that I recommended that you have somebody on the ground to, to do your periodic um stages of the take 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 pictures and videos of the different stages of, of the of the project yes ma'am and don't forget do not start that construction unless you have a contract in place mm -hmm. put a detailed contract okay what am i getting for my money mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and within that contract you detail out your stage payments yes Typically, you say, okay, I'm going to mobilize the contractor to do X. Yes. And let me say this. Let me say this. Uh -huh. People generally just give a mobilization and say, hey, go start working. Uh -huh. I'm going to say to any client of mine, no. Yes. Let's tie the mobilization to specifics. Yes. Too many times a contractor gets that mobilization, the first thing he does, he go buy a Range Rover. <laughs> Or some fancy vehicle or something <laughs> yes yes so what you do you tie that mobilization to specifics yes so you say well okay this mobilization i'm giving you is to pre-purchase my material so that i can possibly save an escalation yes it's my money that you're spending on my project it doesn't become yes. your money until after you have delivered my project to me and what's left yes. is yours yes 
So I want you to spend my mobilization in this way. I want yeah. so much to go towards my materials pre-purchasing. Yes, you can use a certain amount to mobilize your equipment and so on to get started. But I want the majority of my money to benefit me. Mm -hmm. To pre-purchase my materials again to cushion inflation. Right. Too many times that's a loophole that contractors use and again they use that money and they go splurge. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. and before you know it, and that is why i mean i saw the need for this discourse with you to you know very good tips you know as to how to approach construction because a lot of persons would love to build but because of the bad experiences that other persons have had they 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 they, they, they stay far from construction because as far as they are concerned everybody's the same when you know it's just a matter of having the know-how how to approach it um you know so so basically you know this is this is um we're, we're happy that you are able to share those tips with us and what advice would you give to someone who wishes to enter the quantity surveyors field i would say it is highly let me say competitive it is a profession that brings about, you know, great respect. Um, and have a love for numbers. Mm -hmm. Have a love for numbers because you're going to sleep and dream numbers. <laughs> yes, you are going to sleep and dream numbers. And some nights you're going to have nightmares. Did I, did I make a mistake? And of course, you know, young people don't want to just see numbers. They want to see the number in their pockets as well. So is this a well-paid field? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, because pretty much and I have to be very careful in saying this because some clients, when I advise them, OK, pretty much the fees are based on a percentage of your construction cost. Yes. Of course, a client will say, yes, yeah, so then the, the, the higher you push the value, the more money you will make. People will say that, but it doesn't work that way. Because for one, you you you, you put your project out to tender, to bid, and you mm -hmm. accept. And let me say this, I'm speaking about bid. I would not recommend to any client that you necessarily accept the lowest tender. Because the lowest tender can sometimes be way too low to deliver yes and i've seen it happen too many times uh -huh. you know contractor insists hey i can deliver for this price and you show them hey you have concrete priced here at twenty thousand per cubic meter the going rate for concrete is thirty five thousand how can you deliver no oh, man we know we can't do it man know yourself <laughs> and of course you know it becomes misery for the, the professional team Yes. And especially the client. Yes, yes. Because at some point you're going to hear, well, okay then. And you know, some contractors do that deliberately. And I'm not just saying, not casting aspersions of people who are um, unscrupulous. But some will go in knowingly low. Mm -hmm. and I'm aware of that. <laughs> and from day one, they start looking for loopholes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for sharing. And, um, you know, do have a blessed week, Mr. Donaldson. And I thank you much, Mrs. School. Tune into our live stream, Real Estate Equally Speaking, with yours truly every second and fourth Friday as of November 2021. You can contact us at the information on screen.